You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. So, so you mentioned uh, two things that I think would be good to, to do a deep dive into with the time we have remaining. Um, you talked about liquid biopsies a few times, mm -hmm. and you talked about PET CT. So let's start with the latter, because um, there was a CT scan done for Sherry, yeah. uh, which turned up nothing. And hence, understandably, with the tool that he had available to him, the oncologist was confident that cancer hadn't returned. He wasn't misinforming her. He was unfortunately lacking the information. But a PET CT showed it. So how is a PET CT different from a CT? That's a great question. Thanks. So um, most imaging techniques, uh, MRIs, X-rays, even ultrasound, what they do, um, and I'll, I'll use a CT as an example. A MRI is a little bit different than a CT scan. So a CT scan um, will blast, they'll take a radiation beam and they'll blast it right through your body. And then they have a detector on the opposite side of your body that picks up the radiation. And so as, your, as the radiation travels through your body, um, different tissues have different densities. And so they will pick it up in a, um, a known manner. So, you know, if you have a, you know, lung tissue here and you have a big hole and, you know, your lungs are kind of empty spaces, mm -hmm. then the radiation will pass faster through that lung tissue. Mm -hmm. um, and then it gets picked up. So the amount of radiation that gets picked up um, gets put into a, uh, versus the radiation that was sent, gets picked up and put into a computer software program and it analyzes it and it looks for variations in tissue density. And so the theory is that, um, a tumor is going to be either less dense or more dense than the surrounding tissue. So if you have a lung tissue that is all the same density um, and then you have this tumor in it, the tumor is either going to be harder and smaller and more dense or it's going to be more spread out. It's going to have a different density. It's going to look different. And so then the computer creates an image of that. Unfortunately, it does not tell you whether that is a benign lump and it does not identify tumors that have the same density as the surrounding tissue. Oh. So if you have a tumor that is spreading slowly or is in an early stage, it's not going to get picked up by mm -hmm. the CT scan. You know, it's going to get missed. So CT, so the, it could be scar tissue, it could be ben a benign, benign lump yeah, exactly. or benign growth, exactly. or it could be just small or the tissue isn't different enough from exactly. the surrounding tissue and those exactly. would be three reasons why it would exactly. be missed. Yes. And commonly we do see that. We see a lot. Things are missed on CT Quite scan. Bit, yes. The other thing that I think is significant about CT scan as I understand mm -hmm. it is um, because of what you just said, please correct me, mm -hmm. that's what we're here for, um, a CT scan, uh, it, it takes an image, we see this, this mass um, but no, it doesn't tell you whether it's cancerous or not. And so what oncologists have to do for the most part, a radiologist, is they have to then wait a while and take another wait, picture. Yes. Uh, typically that's anywhere from three to six months later yes. that they're taking another image and then the, what they're doing to try to see is it growing or is it scar tissue or is it just kind of looking weird but supposed to be there. Has it changed? Yeah, is they're comparing these two images uh, to see, it, uh, yes, what kind of growth has there been. Still doesn't tell them whether it's benign or malignant, but they assume if it's grown, it's malignant. Okay. But by then, it's also spread throughout your body. Right. We've got, yeah, months wasted. Mm -hmm. So, pet, pet CT on the so other pet hand. pet CT, um, it uses a sugar. It's called an FDG. It's a radioactive isotope. They um, inject it into you. And then what this happen, what happens is cancer cells, it's attached to a sugar. This FDG um, is a sugar radioactive isotope. It only lasts in your body for a few hours. And so they inject it into you, um, you wait a while, and then the tumors, um, because they're growing so fast, they preferentially drink up a lot of this FDG fluid, mm -hmm. much more than surrounding tissues. Mm -hmm. And then what they do is they give you a CT scan. And so anywhere that has mm -hmm. a higher concentration of this FDG is gonna glow like a Christmas tree. Ah. So even if a tissue is the same density, it, it's going to be drink, a, a cancerous tumor is the same density. It's going to be drinking up more of this FDG fluid, right. and so it's going to glow it's much. It's going to stand out. It's going to stand out, 
um, and quite significantly. Right. Now, important thing about a PET CT is the amount of the sugar radioactive isotope that is that this tumor drinks up is referred to as the serum uptake value. Um, and you'll see it on a PET CT report. You'll see SUV was 4.1 or SUV was 18.9. And that tells you how aggressive that tumor is. Wow. So you may have a very small tumor that is, you know, just on the edge of your arm that has an SUV of, you know, 30. Mm. That tumor is going to metastasize and it's going to grow fast, but it's easily removed. You could just yeah. cut it out. And then you may have this massive tumor in your abdomen that only has an SUV of four. Mm. You know, and that tumor is almost dead. It's not very active, but most of the focus is going to be on that tumor. If you're being treated just based on a CT scan, they would totally miss the highly aggressive tumor over here, and they would focus on this tumor that's almost mass, dead, that's right? almost dead, and totally misguided. Right. And so um, BC Cancer did that interesting statistic that was reported in the, in the Vancouver Sun a few years ago. I think it was like, they said when a PET CT is done 87% of the time, it changes the, the treatment, treatment plan. plan. <laughs> I don't know how accurate that is, but that was just what that's they were their own statistic. At the time. Yes, and that I mean that was why they were building their PET CT machine. All right. So PET CT is still not used as a standard diagnostic tool for cancer in Canada. Uh, there's maybe thirty PET CT machines in the country in pu public health. I'm healthcare. not sure. I think it's about thirty-five. That's in thirty-five. Yeah. Uh, in the United States. There's thousands of PET CT about, machines. Yeah, about 4,000 or so. Now. Yes, uh, and it is often used as a diagnostic tool for cancer uh, as a first line or, or second now, line. One other thing I wanted to mention about PET CT is when it is used to monitor a cancer, um, we have criteria that determines whether a person is responding to a drug. Hmm. It's called the RESIST criteria, and it refers to four different response types. So you can have what's called a complete response, which is over 30% um, reduction in the tumors. You can have a partial response, which is less than 30. You can have a stable disease, which is no change in the tumor, no growth, no reduction, which is also a positive thing. Mm -hmm. The tumors are not growing. And then you can have progressive disease, and that's where the tumors are continually growing. One of, the, one of the things that you're going to see the most is what's called a mixed response. Um, and that's where some of the tumors shrink and some of the tumors don't. Mm. This in is the same person? In the same person. With the same treatment? Yes. And that's because, um, you know, the slightly different genetics and slightly different features. Mm. Some drugs will enter, you know, for example, some drugs will be more effective in certain tissues than other tissues. Mm. They'll have a problem accessing oh. other tissues. So not all drugs um, affect all of the tissues at the same rate or are able to um, have enough bioavailability in every tissue. Mm. And there could be individual genetic differences um, to each tumor. Mm. The good thing about a PET CT is by measuring the SUV, you can see if the SUV is going up or down. So the tumor size may stay the same, but all of a sudden the SUV has gone from 18, it, you know, for that the, the one over here, down to three or four. Right. And that tells you that even though it's a big lump still, it's mostly dead tissue. Right. Whereas with a CT, you just see the you same size. You just see the lines. same size, and a doctor would stop treatment. Because they'd assume it's not working. Exactly. Right. Whereas with a PET CT, you can actually see, oh, it is working. This cancer exactly. is almost gone. Don't measure stop in, the treatment. Measure the SUV of the individual tumors. Interesting. Very important. Interesting. The other thing that it may be obvious to you um, is with a PET CT, remember I was saying about CT scans and how it can take three to six months for the doctor to even know without supreme confidence that it is cancer. Uh, with a PET CT, how long does it take? Um, you get your results <laughs> literally right away. There you go. So you don't have to wait months and months and months to see if the tumor right. is growing. Now there are a couple types of cancer where PET CT is not so effective. Right. And what yes. are those? Um, so and prostate, why? prostate cancer. Um, uh, the FDG has a problem entering the capsule of early prostate cancer. Now, once mm -hmm. prostate cancers are are more advanced. And spread throughout the body, uh, then of course um, the tumors drink up this this sure. fluid. But they have um, they have a 
bunch of different isotopes now, and they have one specific for oh. prostate cancer, and it works quite well. Oh wow! So, so okay. yeah, so, that's so, the, not so exactly. the technology has changed a lot. Okay, and is there not something also about the brain and PET CT? Um, so the brain isn't you, or it's not used as as commonly as it should be. Oh. Um, uh, MRIs are very effective for determining um, brain tumors, um, but you can have uh, something called pseudoprogression, and that is where um, uh, you you get your treatment for the brain tumor, but you're not sure if it's worked or not because you you know the tumor you know looks the same size or something. Um, so, in um, or or what can happen? Uh, more commonly in immune therapies and so on, is the immune, it, you know, the treatment's working very well and the immune system enters the tumor and blows it up and makes it look bigger. Wow. So it's actually being attacked by the immune system and it's actually, you know, half dead or dead, mm. but it looks bigger on a CT scan right. because there's all these immune cells inside of it. Right. So that's called pseudoprogression. And so that can happen a lot in brain tumors. Mm. And um, a PET CT is very useful for determining whether you have pseudoprogression mm -hmm. or actual progression. In the same way as you were just saying earlier about you can tell whether it's just tissue Yes. Or live cancer. Bottom line, go mm -hmm. with the biological activity and not the size. There you have it. That is a good Always. summary right there. Yeah. Size is not a good indicator. Thank you for watching Seatome TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.